Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Calvin Mills of the Church of God Holiness in Bogus Bay, and I'm always happy to occupy this window of opportunity on JTV to share with you God's wonderful word. We trust you have been listening and sharing, uh, inviting others to join and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us as a people and to us as individuals. Amen. And we are believing God to even touch the world from this part through this avenue of JTV because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we want to say again, thanks to all of you who are praying for us and uh, praying with us. And uh, also your words of encouragement mean a lot to us. So you want to contact me at any time, coghbb at gmail.com or by telephone, uh, 4941344340472 I'll be glad to correspond with you and encourage you the best way that I can. I trust that you have been touched by the past broadcast and I'm believing God to touch you with today's broadcast. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today I'm bringing you a message from the book of Jeremiah. You know there are some powerful messages uh, that God wants to bring to us from the even the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. There's a message for you and me to prepare us, my people. So may God speak to us through this message today. Praise the Lord. I want to start by asking you a question. Do you enjoy eating bananas? <laughs> I do. I could remember a friend that uh, had, his father had uh, pasture land and in your know, plantings. And we would go into the ground and he would have that secret uh, hideaway of, of figs. Those little small stuff that really tastes very uh, sugary and sweet and wonderful to the taste. And we would go into those ground and we will eat away on those little figs. They were so wonderful. They were so awesome. And as much though as I enjoy eating bananas and eating figs, I don't eat without absorbing those bananas. I don't eat without absorbing those figs because, you know, they might look good and clean and pure on the outside, but on the inside, there might be something that ain't too uh, good about them. And uh, for instance, I used to watch a lot of imported bananas bought from the supermarket. And when you would break them, you will see blackness running on the inside of them. And that bothered me. I used to call them AIDS banana. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with AIDS. I want something that is pure. Amen. And bananas are good for us. They're nutritious and they are delicious. But God wants to speak to us, amen, and use the fig, amen, as an instrument, as a picture to get to our hearts today, amen. So I want to, you to picture yourself as a fig or a banana, amen. And I want to ask you the question, what quality of fig or banana are you? What quality of fig or banana are you? Well, let's examine what... Uh, Jeremiah saw in a vision from Jeremiah chapter 24. I'll be ministering from the entire 10 verses, but for time-saving purposes, I will read the first three verses. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord, after that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah and Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Uh, rather, Jeconiah, the son of Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, What? Seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good. And the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. My, my, my. I choose to entitle this message, What quality of fig are you? And the subject, of course, is good and bad figs. May God speak to us through this word today. Father, we bless you. We know, O oh God, that your word is powerful. Your word, O oh God, will cause us to see ourselves as we really are. 
And some of us today will find out we are not all that we thought we were. But, O oh God, even if that's the case, help us to know that your grace and mercy is always present and ready to deliver us from every bondage, to rid us of every corruption, and to transform us into your image and likeness. Use this word, Lord God, to touch some heart. They'll not only be stirred, but they'll be changed by the power of your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit. This I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah had a vision of two baskets of figs. Amen. And this vision has to do with a pictorial representation, amen, of uh, two sets or categories of people from one nation, uh, from one kingdom. Amen. And uh, some will find your, ourselves in one category, some in another category. Amen. But let's note the vision of figs. Amen. And of course, vision is seeing the future before it happens. So what God often does, he shows us what is to happen before it happens. And when he shows us it is so real, it is as if it has already been done. And that's the picture here. Amen. What Jeremiah saw. Amen. He saw the Babylonian captivity as if it was already a reality. So Jeremiah saw a vision of two baskets of figs and they were placed just in front of the temple in Jerusalem. And what comes to our mind is, amen, uh, the offering of first fruits. And if you remember in our last meeting, our message, we mentioned, my friend, that the secret of success is putting God first and doing first things first. And one of the first thing principle is that the first of every crop Amen. The first crop belongs to God. That's the first food. It was brought to God into the temple. And I tell you, the first governs the rest. The first sanctifies the rest. And there's a powerful principle in first things. Amen. So, no doubt, my friend, amen, the picture is one, uh, these two baskets being brought as first fruits to the temple of the living God. And these baskets were set down Amen. In readiness to be examined by the priest who rigorously rejected all fruit that was not sown, according to the public commentary. Amen. So, my friend, the principle is inspection comes before reception. That's the truth. God doesn't just receive a fourth fruit offering like that. He inspects to see if he's getting what he expects. It must be of a certain quality. Amen. And if that quality is not there, it is not received, but rather rejected. Yes, my friend. And the truth is, before we get to heaven, amen, we will be inspected before we are received. That's the truth. And uh, it reminds me of the parable of the wedding feast, when everybody who attended the wedding was to attend in a particular wedding garment. But there was a man found at the wedding who did not wear that wedding garment. And upon accessing the entrance to the wedding feast, he was inspected and found to be without a garment. And then he was rejected, cast out, and punished for not having on a wedding garment. My friends, most of us sing about heaven. We talk about heaven. But I want to ask you, do you have on your wedding garment. And if God would inspect you now, would you be pure and clean, sanctified, holy? Would you be ready to be received? Or would you be found with corruption and evil in your being, in your heart, thereby you being rejected instead of being accepted? Amen. These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves today. Amen. So we know the vision of the figs. Let's note the diverse description of these two baskets of figs. Diverse means different. And these two baskets of figs were very, very different. Let me go a little further and say they were extremely diverse. The farthest to the left and the farthest to the right you can go. That is how these two baskets of figs appear in comparison. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Because he said some were very good and others were very bad or 
very evil. And oh, the KJV really, you know, emphasize the evilness of the bad figs. Yes, he said, so, so the, the evil was very evil, so evil that it could not have been eaten. Think about that. Amen. So let's do look at these two baskets. In one basket, there were fresh, just ripened figs. That's how the Living Bible puts it. Fresh, just ripened figs. Amen. And ain't nothing beat fresh, just ripened figs. They were like the first ripe figs gathered in June and considered to be a delicacy. You know, normally the harvest is expected in August, but some harvest shows up early. And normally that early harvest was said to be a quality, amen, a very high quality harvest that sprung out in the month of June, amen. And the early figs of summer were most refreshing and satisfying, according to Hosea chapter 9 and verse 10. So refreshing and satisfying that <laughs> an early fig is hungrily snatched and gobbled up according to Isaiah 28 and verse 4. So when you see something good, something pure, something delicious, something nutritious, yes, my friend, something that will just enhance your well-being and your sense of well-feeling, oh, my friend, you go after that stuff and you even probably get the, get the hog, uh, you know, you know, you, you get the hog mentality. You just want to whoo, gobble it down, swallow it down because it is so wonderful. It is so attractive, so appetizing, so enjoyable. Well, that's how these this basket of figs were. That was like the first ripened figs. Amen. But in the other uh, basket, there were naughty figs. Naughty figs which could not be eaten. Amen. And the word naughty mean of poor or inferior quality. Poor or inferior quality. And of course, I play with these words, quality and quantity. You know, for instance, uh, in churches today, we have no, you know, if there's a rival spirit, which there shouldn't be, there are some churches that have quantity, but some people believe they don't have the quality. Why they have the quantity? No, no, don't throw the book at me, please. Just hear what I'm saying. And there are some churches that are smaller numerically, and they will tell you it's not the quantity, but it's the quality. <laughs> I don't know how to rectify the matter, but uh, it is not to say that where there is quantity, there can't be quality, and where there is quality, there can't be quantity. Amen. It, you know, quality and quantity can appear at the same time. But when it comes to souls, when it comes to uh, people that are obedient and responsive to God's word and people who meet God's uh, requirement, his righteous requirement for us, I must say many a times, amen, if you have quality, amen, the quantity wouldn't be large. Because the Bible said, broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many be there that find it. And narrow and cramped is the road that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find it. Now, in that context, we see, my friend, amen, lack of quantity, amen, could really enhance, amen, the high quality of the product. Oh, my friends, may God speak to us today. Nevertheless, God is not looking for mere quantity. God is looking for quality. And I'm not saying he is not looking for quantity. He is because Jesus died for the whole world. Jesus died that all men might be saved. He wills not the death of one sinner, but all should come to repentance. That speaks of quantity. But again, God knows what to expect. He knows the end results. And he said, few there be that find it. And so many times out of a multitude, there was just a small remnant, amen, that meet that kind of quality that God is pleased with. Think about that. Amen. So this basket of naughty figs, the Living Bible describes it of a spoiled, moldy, too rotten to eat figs. Spoiled, moldy, and too rotten to eat. So you see, you see the diversity here. One was uh, fresh, ripened figs. Amen. Early, the first fruits. It was pure, sweet, delicious the highest quality, and the other was of the poorest of the poorest quality. It was spoiled, moldy, 
too rotten to eat, therefore rendered very unedible, very unfit or very unsafe to be eaten. Oh, my friends. Let's note uh, in this message the depiction of these two baskets of figs. Now, we have seen there's a vision of two diverse baskets. We have given you the description and the extreme diversity of these two baskets of figs. But thirdly, let us note the depiction depiction of these two baskets of figs. Now the root word depict means to represent with a picture. Amen. It reminds me now when you're speaking to minds that cannot really comprehend by merely hearing, they need visual aids to in to enable them to grasp or comprehend the truth. Like little children, when you teach them in Sunday school, you are more effective when you are not only talking, but as you speak, you are showing pictures that are speaking what you are speaking. You know what I'm talking about. Well, Israel or Judah, at times, they were hard of learning. Amen. They were hard of grasping the revelation, the truth that God wants them to grasp. So he spoke to them in the pictorial language. And oftentimes, even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, when he wanted the Pharisees and those to get a message, Jesus will speak a parable and the parable will paint a picture. And when Jesus finished painting that picture, the scribes and the Pharisees knew exactly what he meant exactly who he was speaking to or addressing in the parable. Nothing beat, my friend, a pictorial message. Hallelujah. And so here, my friend, we see that God wants to show two classes, two categories of people that represents two extremely diverse uh, diverse quality, amen, a product, if you please. Yes, my friend, in this vision of two baskets of figs. And of course, the good figs, the good figs, let us look at the good figs first. They represent the exiles that were sent to Babylon. Jeconiah, king of Judah, the princes, and the skilled tradesmen of Judah, according to the first verse. Now, I know this passage of scripture can really play with you. Because I say, those in the church today that we deem to be the good figs, <laughs> sometimes in reality are the bad figs. I know, I know I'm getting your attention. And those that we deem to be the rotten bad figs, sometimes are indeed the good figs. Because why am I saying what I'm saying? It appears at this time, in this vision, that while some were carried away captive to Babylon, which would seem like punishment, like chastisement, amen, and so normally the people that are punished and disciplined and chastised, they are the bad people. That's the conclusion many of us will draw. And there were some that were left back in Jerusalem. And they would conclude, well, we who are left, we are the finer ones. We are the better ones. But those that were taken, Taken away captive to Babylon, they are the bad fruit. They are the spoiled, moldy, rotten fruit. So they thought. Are you hearing me? But according to God, the good figs were those that were taken into Babylonian exile. Amen. Think about that. Yes, my friend, but the good figs not only represents those that were taken into Babylonian exile, those whom God, amen, you see, God not only sees us for who we are, he sees us for what we can become, he knows the thoughts and the intents of our hearts, and he, know, he knows those who will repent, he knows those who will reform, he know, he know those who will return unto him, he knows those that will reconnect to a vibrant relationship with himself, but he knows those of us who are hardened, those of us who are concrete in our wills that we're going to do our own thing we're going to do it our own way we're going to be clothed in our own self-righteousness which are as filthy rags in the sight of God God knows the end from the beginning so he knows the good from the bad food you and I can't always disown the good from the bad because some good figs or bananas in church today they have the prettier skin Lord have mercy. I don't want to mess with nobody. But what I'm saying, when you look at the banana skin or you look at certain people in church from the, the externals, they look holy. They look well adorned. Even their facial features and their demeanor speaks of them as good faith.
stinks. But when God look at them from the heart, they are nothing but filthy, rotten, moly, corrupt figs that are unedible. They are not fit to be eaten. They are not fit to be ingested nor digested. God looks beyond the externals. God looks, amen, deep into the inner man, deep into the heart, and what he's looking for is character. Character is who you really are. Amen. Reputation is what people think you are, but character is who you really are indeed. And God knows the character of every one of us. Are you hearing me today? Ah, uh, my friend, I'm feeling it coming on. The good figs uh, not only are depicting the, the people that God can walk with, the people that God will mold, the people that God will pu purify and preserve holy unto his namesake, but the good figs also represent God's treatment of the exiles. God's treatment of the exiles. And if they are good figs, then they will experience good treatment. Now, I'm messing with somebody you now because sometimes what you call bad treatment is really good treatment. <laughs> you know why? I often say it this way. Anything that brings you closer to Jesus is good for you. So sometimes when you experience discipline, you say, oh, he don't love me. Mommy don't love me. Daddy don't love me. If they love me, why are they whipping me like that? I remember the Reverend John Hagee says, son, now daddy loves you. <laughs> and daddy got to do this thing because this is good for you. Daddy wants you to be a good kid. He wants you to be a well-behaved kid, an honorable kid. And so what daddy's doing is not out of any hatred, but daddy's got to clap you behind because daddy loves you. And the Bible says, whom God loves, he chastens it. Are you hearing me? That's the truth. So one, sometimes what we may deem bad for us is good for us. Hallelujah. And so the, even though the, these people were taken captive to Babylon and would be in exile for 70 years, God says, I'm going to treat them good. Oh, you could be in a strange place. You could be in a bad place, but you can experience good treatment. You see, because wherever you are, Jehovah Shammah is there. He's a God who is with you. And if God take you anywhere, God is there where he took you. Are you hearing me today? So the good figs represent God's good treatment. Now you need to know the I wills of the text. Amen. Like the early writing figs, these are the highly prized people and that are retained by God. Again, the I wills indicates God's favorable treatment to these people. He said, I will set my eyes upon them for good. Yes, you're going to Babylon. And you feel you're going to be mistreated, you're going to be taken advantage of, you're going to be abused, but my eyes are upon you for good. Oh, that's encouraging to somebody because some of you feel like you're in Babylon right now, you're in exile, you're in captivity, you're in a strange land, you have lost your joy, you have lost your peace, you have lost your song. Oh, my friend, and you feel depressed and discouraged, but I want you to know, my friend, if you have a heart for God, if you have a love for God in spite of where you are, the eyes of God are upon you for good. Glory to God. I will see to it that you are well treated. You know, God, look at it. God allow even Daniel and those folks, amen, that were taking into this Babylonian uh, territory, my friend. God allowed them to be treated well. Why? Because they honored God. They had a heart for God and the king showed them favor. The king even make his own people jealous because these aliens were the top dogs <laughs> in the king's government. Are you hearing me, somebody? I am telling you, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be a stranger in the land of the BVI. But if you have a heart for God, if you love God with all your heart, though you're in a strange land, God's eyes are upon you for good. He will show you his favor. Glory to God. He said, I will bring them back here again. Now, there were those who probably thought when God gone with them, he gone to get rid of them. He gone to destroy them. Yes, he gone to punish them that there'll be no more, but the devil is a liar. Amen. God said, I'm going to bring them back. I don't know. Some of you might be in a strange land. You might be going through a disciplinary season. You might be going through a season of reformation. You might be confused as to why you are where you are, but there is a purpose why you are where you are. And I want to tell you, my friend, God will bring you back. God will restore you back to your rightful place if you endure the season of discipline. If you endure the season of corrective judgment, you will be spared 
and the destructive judgment. Are you hearing me today? I will bring them back to Jerusalem. I'm not finished with you. Tell your friends, don't write me off yet. I know I've had some setbacks. I know I've lost some joy and I've lost some steam, but tell them I'm coming back because God is still working on me to make me what I ought to be. And though I'm not there yet, I'm going to get there because I'm going to submit to divine chastening and I'm going to let the Lord have his way in my life. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I'll bring them back here again. He said, I will build them and not pull them down. Yes, my friend, he didn't allow you to go to Babylon merely for the dis you, for your destruction, but for the destruction of the flesh, for the destruction of idolatry, for the destruction of carnality, amen, and for the destruction of spiritual blindness and spiritual numbness. God allow us to go there because he wants to chip some stuff off of us. He wants to put us back on the wheel and he wants to reshape and remold our lives again. He is in the reconstruction business. He is in the restoration business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God said, I will plant them and not pluck them up. Not uproot them. He's not going to uproot you to get rid of you. He may have transplanted you from Jerusalem onto Babylon, but another transplantation is coming. He's going to, oh God, take you out of Babylon and he's going to bring you back into Jerusalem. And if you stay the course, you will experience the force. As one preacher say, stay in the hands of God. It might seem bitter, but it's going to get better. Because anything that brings you closer to Jesus is good for you. <laughs> God said, I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. He said that in the, four, in the seventh verse. You see, because God is looking for commitment that would enthrone the Lord upon our hearts with no rivals. And if you study Israel and Judah, they often got in trouble with idolatry. They would bring a rival to God in the temple, in the throne of their hearts. And oh, my friend, that provokes God to jealousy that get God spit hot and God will bring in a foreign nation and judge them. Are you hearing me? But God said, I'm going to give them a heart to know me that I and I alone am God. There is no God but me. You should have no other God before me. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Now let's look at the depiction that represents the spoiled, moldy, too rotten to eat figs. They speak of Zedekiah. Another king of Judah, his officials, and all the people in Jerusalem, as well as those who were left in Egypt. No, the thing is that they were left in Egypt, they felt good. Uh, they were left in, in Jerusalem. Oh, we are the better one. You see, there's some of us who pride ourselves that we are righteous. We don't, we don't seek the righteousness of God, but we feel like we are better than others. We feel like we are gooder, sorry to mess with you, than others. Are you hearing me? And oftentimes, my friends, amen, we regard those that are under some suffering, under some chastisement, that they are the rotten figs. So those who remain in Jerusalem, no doubt, those that were taken away captive, they are the rotten figs. They are the ones that need to be destroyed. But sometimes the opposite is the reality. Ah, my friends, many are prone to think that the greatest sufferers are also the worst sinners. Do you remember Job and his friends? God bragged on Job and said, told the devil, have you considered my servant Job? There ain't nobody like him. A man that fears God and issue evil. But yet because of what God allows Satan to do to Job, his friends said, you must have had sinned. You could not be going through all that you're going through if you didn't sin. Not necessarily. God allowed it. But they misjudge him that he had to be a bad sinner in order to experience the badness. My friend, it don't matter how righteous you are, we will experience the good and the bad, even the good, the bad, and the ugly in this life. But my friend, thanks be to God, God's goodness will outweighs all that the devil tries to do to us. Praise be unto God. Are you hearing me? Joseph went from the pit to the palace. He was a man, a young man that fears God. God was pleased with him. God was with him. God accompanied him from the pit to the palace. But if somebody had looked on this man's life, that's a troubled kid. That's a kid. That's a problem child. Look here, he come out of the pit. Look, he getting trouble in Potiphar's house. He put in prison. That's a, no, my friend. But look how he progressed from the pit to the palace. God was with him. Are you hearing me? Oh, my friend, the truth of it is, the very bad, unedible figs represented God's terrible treatment to these people that were left in Jerusalem. Amen. He, he said, I will treat them like spoiled figs, too bad to use. Lord have mercy. I tell you, if a fig ain't no good, if it's spoiled, if it's moly, if it's corrupt, you get rid of it. 
You don't use it. You don't even try to salvage it. No, if you're really hungry like me, or sometimes you might try to bite around it and pick around it and make sure your mouth don't touch that, too, that nauseating, naughty part of the fig. But as far as God is concerned, my friend, if it's too bad to eat, it will be discarded. It will be destroyed. God said, I will treat them like spoiled figs too bad to be used. I will make them repulsive, abhorrent, distasteful, disgusting to every nation of the earth. They shall be mocked. They shall be taunted. They shall be cursed wherever I compel them to go. Wow, that's serious. That's heavy stuff. Are you hearing me? Because they were bad, naughty figs. And although they felt good about themselves, they'll be feeling horrible in a while. When their true figure is exposed, they'll be nauseating wherever they go. They'll turn people off wherever they go. People will have a proverb about them wherever they go. And God said, I'm going to put my hand upon them and it's going to be heavier. It's going to be a heavy hand of destruction because in the 10th verse, he said, I will destroy them from the land of Israel. You see, my friends, because they remain in Jerusalem and everything seemed cool for a while, Resort said it would took 11 years after the captives left to Babylon for those that remained before there was an invasion and there was desolation and destruction. So you would say they had 11 years of grace, but all they do is pat themselves. <laughs> we are the better ones. We are the good figs. My friends, stop thinking of yourself better than you really are. True humility is knowing where you stand before God. The Bible says, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall and there's some of us who deemed in ourselves that we are righteous but we have not gotten a righteous witness from god and such righteousness is self-righteousness and if you don't repent of it you will be destroyed because of it because you'll be too rotten to be used Lord have mercy. Let me conclude this message today and drive it home and challenge you to seek God for his mercy upon your life. In conclusion, every one of us is represented by one of these two baskets of figs. Either we are represented by the basket of fresh, just ripened figs, amen, or the basket of spoiled, moldy, too rotten to eat figs. Now, if we are represented by the basket of fresh, just ripened figs, amen, our lives will exhibit humility, repentance and reformation or reform and we will be the recipient of God's good and favorable treatment even if we in Babylon even if we in a strange land are you hearing me but on the other hand if we are represented by the basket of spoiled moldy too rotten to eat figs our lives will exhibit pride it will exhibit rebellion they'll re exhibit unrepentance they'll exhibit defiance and they'll exhibit a false sense of security and we will be the recipient of god's terrible judgment god's terrible treatment of rejection humiliation and destruction i want to ask you in closing where do you see yourself are you represented by the good the basket of just ripened wonderful high quality figs or are you represented by the basket that is filled with moldy spoiled too rotten to eat figs the truth of the matter is, my friends, I know in the context from which I speak, those that were too rotten to eat, they were doomed to destruction. If you feel too rotten now, but your heart is smitten with remorse over your sin, over your idolatry, over your rebellion, there's hope for you. If you repent and return, you won't perish. But if you harden your heart and you justify yourself and you reject this word and you go on in, in, in false assurance... Be sure your sins will find you out and your end will be bitter. Your end will be disastrous and destructive. Oh, may God help us today to see ourselves and humble ourselves in the sight of the mighty God. If you feel bad, if you feel rotten, if you need to be transformed, repent. Now ask God to have mercy upon you. Ask him to come in into your heart and your life. Ask him to purge you by the blood of Christ of every sin, of every corruption, of every moldy sentence and sight. Ask him to transform your life. He will do it. 
if you will trust him let me pray this prayer in closing father in the name of jesus for everyone who repent upon hearing this message after humbling themselves because they have seen themselves in these two baskets of figs if they have seen themselves on the negative side but there's a sense of remorse a sense of a sense of need of jehovah and they will cry out to you now save them deliver them rescue them transform them oh god but oh, if they, if they harden their heart and stiffen the neck, inform them that they will be suddenly cut off in that without remedy because they are too rotten to be used. Father, have your way in this message. The results are up to you and those who will cooperate with your word and your Holy Spirit. And we leave it all in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. C-O-G-H-B-B at gmail.com or 284-494-1344. Contact me. Let me know. You've been taught. You've been encouraged by this message. Uh, you can contact JTV and let them know. They'll be glad to pass the message on and just let them know you are enjoying this window of opportunity to share with Pastor Mills in the Word. Tell your friends. They can visit. Amen. Some of these messages on the YouTube. Amen. Pastor Calvin Mills at JTV and they can relive this message. So until I come your way again, I want to remind you to keep listening to the truth, for the truth will set you free. Bye-bye.